Compost is a crucial component in how we grow vegetables here at Mondo Farms. It forms the very foundation of our vegetable farming by giving our plants like these a healthy basis from which to go from the field to our bank balance. It also saves us a bit of money. In this video is all about compost. We're going to be talking about what compost is, why we use it, and how we use it here at Mondo Farms. And of course, we're going to be taking a good look at how we make our own compost here in these big outdoor heaps like these near our fields. It's quite a simple process, and as you will see, compost is different from manure. In fact, I get very triggered whenever I hear people using the term compost manure. Ah! Stay with us. Greetings from the farm. I hope you're well. It's so good to have you back with us again here on the Mondo Farms channel. My name is Chisha Folotia. I am standing at the bottom of Kondwani 1, which is one of our main vegetable growing areas here at Kimberley Farm on the outskirts of Chongwe. Let's start by defining compost and looking at some of the principles around it. According to Wikipedia, which is where we almost always go to look for a very simple and easy definitions of things that we need to get a better understanding of. Compost is a mixture of ingredients used as a plant fertilizer and to improve soil's physical, chemical and biological properties. Compost is commonly prepared by decomposing various materials into a mixture that is rich in plant nutrients and beneficial organisms. Compost improves the soil fertility in gardens, landscaping, horticulture, urban agriculture and organic farming, which helps us to reduce our dependence on commercial chemical fertilizers. Did you notice that I said reduce our dependence on chemical fertilizers? I didn't say replace the use of such fertilizers. That's an important topic that we'll be touching on later. Some of the benefits of compost include providing nutrients to crops as a form of fertilizer, increasing the organic content of the soil, increasing the humus or humic acid contents of the soil, and introducing beneficial microbes that help to suppress pathogens in the soil and reduce soil-borne diseases. Let's focus a bit on one of the most important benefits of compost, and that is how it can act as a kind of natural soil conditioner. Soil condition is an important thing. If you try to grow crops in soil that is in a poor condition, it can lead to challenges with the growth of your plants and their health. We're talking about poor conditions, things like uh, there are no nutrients, there's no nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur in the soil itself. We're talking about having a very high pH or very low pH soil. Things like having a very sandy soil which doesn't hold water or a clay soil which, ho which holds too much water. All of those factors can stunt the growth even leads to death of your plants. So it's really important for farmers like ourselves, gardeners and landscapers to improve the quality and condition of the soil that they're trying to grow things in. You've heard me say it so many times here on the Mondo Farms channel that we don't farm the land, we farm the soil. Three, one B. One Tilipingama Faro. We need to talk about how we use compost here at Mondo Farms. I'm standing in the middle of Kondwani 1B. 
And in this block, we are preparing beds that are going to have a crop of green pepper transplanted into them in a few days time. A quick summary of the way we do our bed preparations is that first of all, for each crop, we determine our bed spacing. Now, in the case of most of our crops, the fruiting vegetables, we use a 1.5 spacing. And then at each 1.5 space, we create this trench here that you can see right here. And in this trench here, we call it the fertility trench. And what we're going to be putting down there is our compost mixture. We will then come back and fill up the trenches and close them off to make a tabletop. We've described it in several of our videos before. And when we do that, it means when we transplant the seedling in here, let's say this is our tabletop, the seedling roots will be able to find the compost that's down there. It's important to state that we avoid putting manure, direct manure into our um, fertility trenches because manure generally tends to be too strong and it can actually damage young seedlings. So the compost really helps by being sort of a slow release mechanism as the organic material that's in the compost continues to decay and releasing its nitrates, so we've come down to Sangwani where we've just put up this new shade house. It's got some sweet pepper in it and we were using a huge heap, a pile of compost that we brought over from uh, Winterthorn Westgate the other day. And let's take a quick look at some of this uh, compost. Of course, the heap was huge and we've used it all in those fertility trenches over there. Having a look closer at how it actually looks. And you can see here, it's full of different textures. Uh, there's some soil in there. There's some little bits of stuff and a lot of undecayed organic material. And this is exactly what we want. I can handle compost quite easily because as we keep saying, compost is not manure. And we can actually compare this compost here to some of the soil that we have here. If I dig down into the ground and yes, this is good. This is, I would call this a sandy loam soil and there is a little bit of organic material in it. So this is good stuff, but it's much, much not, no way is it anywhere near as good for our crops as this stuff. Yo, the sun is high in the sky and it was getting quite hot out there and the sun keeps coming in and out. So I had to come and seek a little bit of shelter here. By the way, this is one of our little storage areas that we've built at the top end of Kondwani One. We have these, try and have these near our fields, especially because our farms are quite large. So we store a little bit of stuff here uh, from time to time. Uh, sometimes some of the chemicals that we might be using for a couple of days um, as we are using it for the Venturi, we're doing our crop protection and our crop nutrition out here. Time to talk about something controversial. Time to talk about how here at Mondo Farms, we use compost as a type of natural fertilizer. And then we also at the same time use synthetic chemical fertilizers. The reason for this is because here at Mondo Farms, as we've said on our videos over the years, we try and do what we describe as farming in the real world. So we try not to hold any ideological position about anything in a way that it will affect our ability to farm effectively and profitably. 
One thing that a lot of people around the world will hold very strong positions about is the concept of organic farming. First of all, it means a lot of things to a whole lot of people. And I don't think people are really very, very, very sure what exactly it means. Now, don't get me wrong. I personally love the concept of, of organic farming. I think it is a great idea, stewardship and, and all of that. But one thing about me is that when it comes to my businesses, I am extremely pragmatic. I do what it takes. For example, here at Mondo Farms, we are trying to do farming as a business. We are here to make this farm work financially for ourselves as a family, for our workers, for all of our stakeholders. And we've got to make sure that we have the highest possible yields from all of our crops. And that means having plants and crops that are as healthy as possible and giving us the highest yields possible. Notice, I haven't even talked about the idea of using chemical pesticides in order to protect our crops. That is a totally different related topic that we're not going to talk about on this video. So please, if you're one of those keyboard warriors that's about to pen a comment to me to teach me the error of my ways, Please hold on, as we say in our language, mbichana mbichana mbekezani. I'm just talking about plant health and vigor. And the bottom line is from our experience of the last several years of farming, compost alone is not enough, does not provide enough nutrients to start our crops, grow them and get them to a productive state where they're giving us the highest yields possible. It just can't happen. It hasn't happened for us. For example, we plant a seed, we transplant a seedling. At that stage, it needs phosphorus, a healthy amount of phosphorus in order to have good root establishment and get the plant growing. Later on, when the plant is in its vegetative stage, that's when it needs nitrogen and we add fertilizers with a strong component of nitrogen in them in order to help with the leaf formation, the stems, the chlorophyll and all of the photosynthesis and all of that. Finally, when the plant starts to flower and produce the fruit that we need to sell in order to make money, that's when it needs phosphorus. And on top of the big three, the NPK, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that I've just spoken about, it also, growing plants also need a range of micro elements. First of all, they need calcium and sulfur. Those are the next level, what we'll call the Europa League. Then we have down, down there at the bottom, a whole bunch of them. We're talking about iron, manganese, boron, molybdenum, nickel, copper, all of those chemicals that a lot of us haven't seen since we were, haven't seen or heard about since we were back in school. All of those micro elements will be able to help our, us grow the healthiest plants possible. So here at Mondo Farms, yes, we use a range of synthetic fertilizers, sometimes granular, sometimes liquid, which could mean foliar or it could mean drenched, and we help to feed our crops through those. Yes, I know on the comments, somebody is triggered and they are about to write me a strong message about I'm doing all this wrong and all of that stuff. Uh, okay, all I ask is that if you absolutely must make a comment about the way we choose to farm here at Mondo Farms, then please try and make it as polite and courteous as possible. Sometimes the comments can be quite challenging. We do read all the comments and we should always be able to thank you for your valued contribution to our channel. Finally, we get to talk about how we make our compost here at Mondo Farms. First, a bit of a background. We started growing vegetables back in 2020. It's been a long journey and we've tried different things along the way. 
When I first learned about the benefits of using compost, we used to buy ready-made compost from shops and other suppliers. Then along the way, we started to grow vegetables that left us with a lot of green waste. I'm talking about things like lettuce, cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots. We realized how much of the leaves were being left behind and that they could be useful in making compost for ourselves. After doing some research on YouTube and internet and everything, we came up with a design and built this beautiful compost structure at Winterthorn in 2021. We've been using it to make large quantities of compost since then. First room. Number two room. Number three room. Compost house. Yapamondo farms. Greetings from the farm. Hey, it's a hot, 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 hot day with the temperature around about the mid 30s. Gonna, as I'm walking along over to uh, Riverside 4 there, over there, Riverside 4, sorry, over there to check on the new crops there. I also wanted to have a very quick look behind me here at the uh, composting schedule and have a very quick show of how things are going because we featured the composting schedule just when it was starting, but we haven't talked about it ever since. But by late 2021 uh, into 22, our farm production was growing. We were growing more and more vegetables, which meant we needed more and more compost. We couldn't go back to buying it from where we used to buy it before. Ah, that was that, that ship had sailed, shall we say. And then our compost making facility could only produce X amount of compost at a time. So I did a little bit more research, looked around on the internet and YouTube, just like you're doing. I do that quite a lot by the way and I learned that we could make compost out in the fields using these compost heaps very simple things that had an added advantage is that we could make the compost right where we were planning to grow a specific crop and that would save us on the time and cost of transporting the compost, the finished compost, out to the field where we needed it to be. So we started making these field compost heaps. Riverside D, two block D. So in the last turning match. Farming can be quite complicated. As you get into farming, you learn that there's a so many things are supposed to be done, so many practices, so many concepts. Oh, you're supposed to do this before you do this. And then when you do this, you're supposed to do it in manner A, B, C. It can get a little bit overwhelming. And I know that some people who are coming into farming from a different background, maybe you were trained as an accountant, a lawyer or something like that, and you don't have that formal agricultural training, Getting into farming and succeeding in it can be quite a thing. I've personally found that I've had three decades of doing business, uh, different types of business in different fields across Zambia. And I started farming in 2020 and I have had to learn X, Y and Z. So a word of encouragement for you out there, if you are struggling to get some of the concepts, some of the simple stuff, some of the complicated stuff, struggling to move from this level to the next level, just keep going, keep practicing, and you shall get it right. Mm, what has triggered me to start talking about this one? I'm talking about 
making compost and learning from all your research that you're supposed to be mixing browns and greens. You'll see videos, you'll see all sorts of internet literature about it. You probably attended some training where they talked about this thing called browns and greens. So what are these browns and greens that we keep hearing about? Mm, I'm telling you, this is something that kind of confused me for a little while, but I had to take my time, research a lot, calm down and just break it down. What is it these people are trying to do and how can I best understand it? There will be people who disagree with my explanation of what browns and greens are in relation to making compost. But here goes, this is how we as Mondo Farms understand it. The browns stand for materials that are rich in carbon. The greens stand for materials that are rich in nitrogen. But where it gets confusing is that browns don't always look brown and greens don't always look green. And they can also be mixed up and look the other way around. For example, here at Mundo Farms, when we want nitrogen, which is a green, we use chicken manure. Now, chicken manure should not look green. If chicken manure looks green, then you got bigger problems, if you know what I mean. So the chicken manure that we get here at the farm normally looks brown. And then when we want carbon, which should be brown, we normally use our vegetable waste, that's leaves from our uh, vegetables, you know, and grass clippings from the garden. And that doesn't look brown, it actually looks green. You see what I mean? It can get quite confusing, can't it? So what I've learned over the years, as I said, is to just keep things as simple as possible. Break it down into the very fundamentals of what we are trying to do. Compost is basically made by decomposing in an aerobic manner. That is with air and oxygen, organic solid waste and other materials. There are many, 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 many ways of making compost. And you can use many, 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 many different materials. The system that we use here at Mondo Farms is a type of process called hot composting. You see, I told you. Farming, it can get complicated. If there's a thing called hot compost, it naturally means that there's another thing on the other side of the spectrum called cold compost. Yes, there is. So we chose hot composting because it is faster. It takes us about just a few months in order to produce a way of making compost effectively at our level than if we were to do cold composting. Disclaimer, on this video, we're not going to be talking about cold composting. This thing is complicated enough as it is. Let's just keep it simple. Let's start by looking at the various ingredients that we use to make our compost. The first one is carbon, which we use plant material. This could be various things, including residue from our vegetable productions. We talked already about vegetable leaves that are left behind from things like carrots, lettuces, broccolis, cabbages, etc. And we also sometimes get rotten fruit or overripe fruit that we can't take to market. We also get dry leaves and garden waste from our home and our other businesses in Lusaka and this is brought over to the farm for us to use in making compost. Tepa Florida 3A pametitenga machafu ya sia binzi kuti tipangire ko compost. The second ingredient we need is nitrogen and for that we choose to use manure. Now here's the thing here at Mondo Farms, I made a strategic decision years ago that we will not keep any animals. There may be a time and a place for pigs and eggs and broilers and ducks and geese and guinea fowls, etc. at some other stage. But here on our two farms, we only grow crops. That means we need to source in our manure from outside. 
the most effective, cost-effective and readily available source of manure that we have on the outskirts of Lusaka is chicken manure. Yes, you can use pig manure, goat manure, cow manure and guinea fowl manure. I was once even offered quail manure. Ingredient number three is soil. Now we add a little bit of soil into the mix in order to um, introduce some of the bike microbes that we need to start the decomposition process of our heaps and our compost mixtures. We get our soil from around the farm, especially from breaking anthills. Anthills are not very much useful for us. And I know it's a controversial thing, but what else are we gonna do with these anthills? So sometimes we go out there and we break down some anthills and bring some soil into the mixture. Some people don't use soil, uh, they use maybe a little bit of an old compost mixture in order to add in the microbes. And the final ingredient that we use is water. We add a little bit of water just to maintain a sort of a moist environment for the digestion to happen. You don't put too much and make the whole thing dripping. Just a little bit of water also helps to get the whole decomposition process moving and maintain the right amount of activity. This is one one B, one A, composting. The way we make our compost using these field heaps is that first of all we set up these frames. Our frames are three meters by one meter wide and we use sticks on the sides in order to hold the mixture together. If you just put the heap, the heap there, there's a certain level that you can't exactly go up as high as possible. And we do try and make our heaps about 1.1, 1.2 meters high in the beginning. They do sink down, by the way. And then the process starts. It's quite simple. We use layers, we put layers of them and we heap them up um, to fill up the frame. So if, let's say, for example, we start with the plant waste and then that's about 10, 15 centimeters. Then we put another equal layer of the manure and then we put a much smaller layer of the soil then we add a bit of water to make it moist, and then we do the same thing again. On about a 1.2, you get about three to four layers of the, same, of, the, of the different mixtures. The decomposition starts, and it can get quite interesting because the process is called hot composting because the mixture that we've created in these plant heaps actually gets very hot. No, I've never tried to cook an egg on top of a compost heap, but I'm sure it could probably be done. You can do some research and find out how hot does it get out there. Please don't ask me in the comments how hot does the, do our compost heaps get. Honestly, it's not something I'm very, very interested in how hot our compost heap gets. All I care about is that over the next one month, it is going to get hot up in there as everything starts to cook. By the way, we've often discussed whether or not that heat that we get in our compost heap is enough to kill pathogens from some of the diseases in maybe some of the fruits that we may have thrown in there or some of the seeds from some of the grass clippings and stuff that we get out there. Generally, we tend to think so. The mixture, the compost heap, is left to cook for a month. And then after that period, 30 days, we come along and we turn it. And we turn it from top to bottom. So what was on the top of the heap now becomes on the bottom and so and so and so. And then what was on the bottom is now on the top. <laughs>
Sau mă sirize aici sus, o? Cum pindă mune n-ai, ai? Eh, s-o dizai pangira o copindă murira o cu ai? Eh, s-o dizai pangira o copindă murira? Eu cu nevoie zâncă o copindă murira o. We leave it for a second month. And then after that, we come along and we take it back to where it was before. So what was on the top here now goes back just like that and it comes through like that. Each time we turn it, it starts to cook again, by the way. The reason we're turning it is in order to have equal amount of mixing of the of of of, of the digestion in all of the materials that we have on the hip as well as to provide a level of oxygen. We really need oxygen in this di this digestion. The last thing you ever want in your compost heap is anaerobic digestion. That causes it to start smelling and it's not something you really want to be taking uh, to your crops and then feeding people out there with it nakana no tifu ah we don't if you this power riverside two block d community tenga compost ya mene yenda ku kimbali after the third month hey presto abracadabra shazam kazam Your compost is ready to use and we can actually get it out there and take it out into the field. Yo hey Simon, chosa ko plastic yo, ni makam, ba plastic msa zia longira, plastic mka yona ngui chosa, chosa ko plastic. Kai tika ifaka na plastic, po faka ko javuto ka sio chosa plastic. Washanga mbe o miju si block ni na plastic ya mene. So that's a very simplified version of how we here at Mondo Farms make compost in field heaps. A number of um, other factors that you'll find um, in there, once you start getting used, you'll start understanding which materials, the plant materials, make better compost. You'll find that grass has certain advantages or disadvantages. Leaves that are this old have certain advantages or disadvantages. This type of chicken manure is better than another type of chicken manure. And then there are times when there's absolutely no chicken manure on the market and people start scrambling and fighting. It is just like the rest of farming. It is yet another process that you need to do if you want to be able to successfully uh, produce food at a, com at a commercial level. By the way, speaking of which, one of the things that we do is we time our compost production for our food, our vegetable crop establishment. So if we know that, oh, in May, on this block, at Kondwani 1, whatever, whatever, we're going to be planting a, a crop of, for example, the, uh, the, the, the green pepper that I was talking about, we've been producing three months before that time the compost that will come there. So compost production, It's a simple thing. It, compost is actually quite easy to make, especially once you understand the difference between manure, which, by the way, is something that comes out of something. That's our generic definition of the word manure. And compost, which is a humus rich organic mixture that is good for plants in so so many ways also good for farmers as we improve the condition and quality of our soil as we said earlier making compost is quite cost effective and it is something that for farmers who understand that farming is not a sprint it is a marathon so you are going to be doing it at a scale and a time and production knowing that today's compost is making the soil in those fields much much better and in a year or two you will be enjoying higher and higher yields even from that we also touched on the important issue of how we complement compost with synthetic fertilizers in order to make sure that our crops are as healthy and yield as much as possible 
Here on the Mondo Farms, we grow vegetables at our two farms and we have been growing this YouTube channel since 2021. It is something that gives us a lot of pleasure with the amount of feedback that we get from people whose lives are being positively affected by the lessons and the experience that we share. We produce a video around about every two, three or four weeks or so. Sometimes we do get a bit busy and I'm sorry if they don't come out as regularly as one may like. We do get a lot of comments and feedback from the viewers and we do look at each and every one of them and try to engage as much as we can. One thing, as you may know, we, we cannot do and we try not to do, we will definitely probably never do, is to be able to come out to people's farms and, and help them on an individual basis. The amount of effort and time and cost that it does to make this channel is something that does start to challenge us when it comes to our deliverables for our own farms here. So these videos that we do for you, we hope that they were able to get you at least somewhere along your journey uh, to productive farming and gardening. The videos come along, you wanna keep watching them and the easiest way to do that is to press the subscribe button. And if you press the bell icon, then YouTube will tell you when another video comes along. If this video is one that you'd like to have other people watch, then please share it on that WhatsApp group with them or share it via, you know, Telegram or Facebook or whatever it is by pressing the share button. And finally, let's let the algorithm know how much we love this video. And you can do that by pressing the thumbs up button that you see down below. My name is Chisha Folatia. It's been a pleasure being here sharing the story of our field compost heap production. We'll see you very soon on the Mondo Farms channel. Shalenipo. Bye-bye.